Neoprene is actually so unbiodegradable, it's used to line landfill. I can remember driving around in my mum and dad's car when in these big gales and these big storms and listening to shipping forecasts. It gives the sea areas around the UK and gives all these sea areas, which are kind of really kind of ethereal names that you've never heard of, um, and talks about the sea state that is going to be experienced in those areas out to sea. It's done in a very formulaic way. And so it'll say, you know, sea state rough later doesn't mean sort of sometime tomorrow. It actually means in six or 12 hours. I can remember listening to this and imagining, you know, these tiny little boats miles out to sea in these huge storms. It's kind of very romantic and kind of, it's got a very kind of cool, cosy, warm feeling to it. Finisterre was one of those areas. Finisterre, six to gale eight, occasional rain, moderate wind. My mum and dad talked to each other about how they like to bring my sister and I up and they said that one of the sort of values that they want to instill in their children was a love of the sea. So from as early as I can remember, I was in boats, sailing, and I was windsurfing. And then uh, when I got to about, you know, 15, 16, I sort of discovered surfing. It became my identity. Sometimes in life you don't realise uh, what you have until it's no longer there. I did marine biology at university, then sort of faced with a job and working in London, and I got a job as a chart surveyor. Suddenly the whole kind of, my whole build up to this point in my life was a massive anticlimax. So I started to sort of think about ways that I could kind of bring my passions and the things that have been important to me in my life. Um, how could I make those more of my life? Similarly, I wanted to, um, you know, a brand, start a brand that meant something, that stood for something. A brand that would address some of the things out there that I didn't think brands were really, were really addressing. Sustainability, innovation, transparency, that sort of thing. And above all, I think I wanted to kind of emotively connect to a community, connect the sea and build products that are kind of a gateway and an enabler of that connection. Um, so I started um, Finisterre. I moved to Snagness in the north coast of Cornwall, where the business is still located and started making these fleeces that were windproof, waterproof, breathable. Like no one had ever seen anything like this before. I wasn't a designer, so they weren't the best looking products. You still see them around now, which is, I'm proud of that, because that's 15 years later. Really, when you came out of the scene of a cold day, they what you put on when you're getting changed in the car park, and it started getting some traction. Those early years, I had no idea what I was doing. And I often say, the business is now 15 years old. I say we're like a 15 year old human. The first like five, six years, I was like, no idea what I was doing. The middle bits, we kind of pointed some stuff I shouldn't have done, like poked a few bears and, you know, a bit disruptive and that sort of thing. And now, just 15 years later, it really feels we kind of, we sort of start to know who we are as a business, as a brand. And it's about the power of collaboration. A couple of examples, I think. One, so we make a lot of merino wool product. The you knitwear know, granny gives you, like, when you are, you know, six and you can't put on because it's so scratchy. That's really, really, really thick wool. But merino is very fine fibre wool. Get a lot of merino from New Zealand. We started thinking about how we could, you know, bring some of our manufacturing back to the UK. So we found a farmer in Exmoor called Leslie and she uh, had a fine fibre sheep on her farm, but had only 26 sheep. We worked with Leslie for about five years and she loves her sheep more than you would believe. And if you're thinking that's a lot, think even more than that. She was basically breeding the sheep and we're as a brand, we're shearing the sheep and storing the wool. And we didn't make a product for five years, but because we had this outlook as a business to try and do things differently, that kept us on the path to, you know, just wait for five years. We've made our first bit of knitwear. So uh, the second story is, is about the unknown again, is we, we make wetsuits. Just making wetsuits from bio rubber, which is a, you know, an alternative to neoprene, but actually most wetsuits are made, made from neoprene. And neoprene is actually so unbiodegradable, it's used to line landfill. We're in this beautiful environment in a product that's really is awful to make and doesn't break down. So I basically, I'm in touch with Exeter University, and they've got this crazy place there where there's a centre for material re-engineering. With them, we basically are trying to work out how to make, uh, how to break down neoprene to make new wetsuits and do closely manufacturing into wetsuits. And we've got, we have a full-time wetsuit recycler from the stair who is the, I think she's the only one in the world. You know, if you have that kind of belief and that kind of conviction, kind of going outside of your immediate sphere of influence, it, be it, you know, scientists, conservationists, politicians, whoever it is, and really kind of make change happen. So, and for me, the exciting is I don't actually know where it's going to end up, uh, but we're launching our first um, 
recycle wetsuit this spring. Finisterre's purpose is to inspire love of the sea and rouse the human spirit through that connection to the sea. You can get introduced to sea at any time in your life and it could, it could change your life. And I think if you can have that connection to the sea, come back on land, you know, really appreciate the energy you've got from that and how the sea sustains you, go back into your other world and maybe you know, be more of an ethical consumer, maybe you know, be more of a guardian, maybe, maybe more act, active involvement with, with the protection and guardianship of the sea, that's a really, really great thing to do. For you guys, if you have felt that connection today, take it back with you into your other worlds and you know, really spread it and uh, share the love. It's a really, really powerful thing to be able to do.